I'm going to show you how to zero touch provision an Aruba uh, 6300 CX switch. And as an added bonus, after we zero touch provision it, uh, we are going to have the switch uh, dynamically profile all the devices that are plugged into the switch ports. And we're going to wrap different user roles uh, around all those devices as we are profiling them into the network. So I'm going to first show you the zero touch provision. And here is a switch that is already connected to Aruba Central. So you can see if I do show Aruba Central, it's showing me that um, it is connected and that it's up. So you can also see the date and time stamp up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factory reset this switch. So I'm going to do erase start and it's going to come back and ask me to confirm that I want to erase the startup config. I click yes, then I type boot system to reboot the switch and it's going to ask me if I want to save the current config. I do not and I am rebooting. Now last thing is ask me am I sure I want to reboot. So yes, the switch is going down for a reboot. Now it will probably start to get a little bit noisy in here because the switch is right next to me. And um, you know, you'll hear the fans spinning up and I'll leave this window open. So it's uh, 542. Let's see how long it takes for the switch to reboot. There goes the fans, it just went down. And um, we'll wait for it to connect back up to Aruba Central. So the whole idea behind this is if you have a large deployment you can take all the switches out of the box. Um, they can be added into Aruba Central ahead of time. And you can move them or you can create a proper group. So I have a group here. Uh, I call it dynamic configuration. And the TG means it's a template group. So let's go into that group. We'll take a look at the template that I have. And we'll watch as the configuration comes down. So here's my main template. And you can see you can have different variables. So um, variables, I only have a few in here as an example. So um, each switch is going to have a different host name. It's going to have a different um, MAC address. It's going to have a different serial number. And it's going to have um, a different IP address on this VLAN 128. Right? I can make different IP addresses on any switch, I mean on any VLAN. So this is just a really short example, and I can make uh, unlimited variables if I want. So let's go in and take a look at my template. Now this template looks just like command line, right? You can import this configuration from a switch as you bring it into the group, and um, you can take this template. So, um, just a couple things. It's really nothing that I have to do but have the switch in the group to have this template come down to it. What I'm showing you now is kind of the added bonus here where I have the switch uh, talking to ClearPass. So ClearPass is my radius server and here is my radius config here to talk to my ClearPass server. Now my ClearPass server is right here. Um, you can see the IP address. And that's what the switch is going to talk to when devices plug into the ports. Now, you're going to see that I will have um, what's called uh, roles. So I have different roles for my printers, um, for my cash registers, my voice phones, my Cisco APs, my Aruba access points. Um, I have uh, different roles for Windows compared to my um, Mac Mini and I'll kind of show you how that works. So I have these different roles and you can put a lot of different things in a role. So for example, we can decide um, if we want it to be a um, uh, uh, trusted device, if we want to trust the DSCP, if we wanted to make it a trunk and push down multiple VLANs, or if we just want it to be um, in an access VLAN, we can set a PoE priority. So there's a lot of things that you can set on a role and here in this example, all my access points will get this setting. Uh, all my Aruba access points will get this particular setting. Um, so I also wanted to show you what an interface looks like. So this is a 24 port switch. So all 24 ports 
um, of my switch have this configuration on them. And let's take a look at um, port one slash one. So what I'm doing here is um, I have a client limit for AAA authentication. So only 12 clients are um, allowed to authenticate or allowed to connect to this port. Now, I can make it unlimited. I could set it to one. I could pretty much set it to any number I want in here. Um, the next thing that I'm doing is I have it set up for .1x authentication. And the reason I have .1x authentication turned on is I want to authenticate um, all of my windows or my uh, OSX devices when they plug into the network, I want them to either authenticate with an, my Active Directory username and password, or I could also push a certificate down. So if I wanted to push the certificate down, I could um, uh, set up a group policy on my Windows server that the first time that um, someone logs into the domain, that it will push down um, a user certificate and a device certificate. Uh, so that's how I have mine set up on my domain. Now, why do I want that? I want a device certificate on so that if someone is not logged into a machine or into a computer, or if it's a shared computer, that it can authenticate to the network and get on just so it can pull Windows updates. But as soon as somebody walks up to that computer and logs in, I want them to have the proper access um, that I'm defining based on their Active Directory group or groups. And if that person logs off and another person logs on, uh, comes and sits down at that computer and logs on, I want them to have the proper access um, that they should have. So this is just an example of um, the .1x authentication. Now, um, what I have here on the same port is I have Mac auth set up. So if a device, if we want to call it a headless device where um, someone is not sitting down at a keyboard and um, a monitor and being able to log on, um, I'm going to call that a headless device. So think of my printer, think of my cash registers, think of um, uh, my IP phones that I'm plugging into the network. So what I'm going to do with those is if they cannot authenticate if they don't send an e poll packet or um, to authenticate with dot one X. I want to take their Mac address and I want it to compare it against a database in ClearPass in my endpoints database. And I want to be able to see um, all my different devices in here if they've been profiled or not. So you can see this device has been profiled. So if a device connects, and it's the first time it's connected to my network, I, um, if I've never seen it before and it hasn't been profiled, I will move it into a role, or I will push a user role to it called unprofiled. Um, in that unprofiled role, the only thing the device can speak to is the DHCP server. Um, once it speaks to the DHCP server and gets an IP address, it gets, um, well, I should say, yeah, it can only speak to the DHCP server and also it can send um, um, over to the ClearPass server so it can profile it. So once my ClearPass server will, uh, profiles the device, we then send a change of authorization back to the switch. It bounces the switch port and um, now the device shows up as profiled and it gets the proper role wrapped around it. So um, I wasn't watching, but uh, over here, my switch is back online. So let's kind of cancel this and let me log into my switch. It should have pulled down its config. And it has. So um, let's do a show Aruba Central. And you can see what time it connected. So three minutes ago, it connected to Aruba Central and it pulled down its configuration. Um, let me do a show run just to show you that it pulled the whole config down. And this is my config that I have that I was just showing you in the template. So it came all the way down to this switch. So that switch is fully zero touch provisioned um, by just um, plugging into the network. 
And now you can see I have devices plugged into this switch. So if I do show port access clients, you can see that I have um, Windows device, well, uh, on port 1.6, and it also thinks that I have um, a Radius authentication on here. So even though this is a Mac Mini that is plugged in on port 1.6, it knows that Windows is running. So if I open my Parallels desktop here, you can see that Windows is running, and it, uh, the switch properly profiled it. It also properly profiled my phone, my Cisco AP, my Aruba AP, and there's another device here on port 18 that is unprofiled. Um, I have not set that up um, yet, so I can kind of show you how to set that up. So let's also take a look at uh, ClearPass and let's look at Access Tracker that shows us how these devices just authenticate it um, at um, 547. So you did see before when we did a show Aruba Central that that's what time the switch came up and my devices authenticate it. So let's kind of scroll this over a little bit. You can see the Macintosh authenticate it. You can see um, my Aruba access point, my Cisco access point. So as they came up onto the network, um, they, um, they pulled down their proper role. Now, this is already a known client. So if we look at this device, let's take the MAC address. Just want to show you an example of how this works. Um, if I look at the input, here's my MAC address. Let's look at this in my end user database. So if I go to my endpoints and I paste in this MAC address. And now you can see this is my access point and it has been profiled. So it's in the database. As soon as it came up, it knew about it and it moved it into the proper. So the switch communicated with ClearPass and ClearPass said, I know what you are based on your MAC address. It didn't do a MAC off. It didn't do the traditional MAC off where you're passing the MAC address as the username and the password um, to ClearPass. All it did was say, I'm looking at your MAC address. I want to know if you're, you have been profiled and I know exactly what type of device you are. So what I'm going to do is it's in the database. It already knows about it. I am going to go in and I'm going to delete this device out of the database. So now um, ClearPass does not know what this device is. And I am going to go back and let me see what port this device is on. So it's on port 16. So I'm going to reset this device and you're going to see that it, it comes up and it's going to come up um, unprofiled and then it is going to quickly um, become profiled. So I just unplugged the device and I plugged it back into the network. And in a second here, I should have um, the device connect. Oh, yep, I do have it on access tracker. So I have to wait, you know, for the access point to boot up. So when I unplugged it from the network, it powered it down. So now that it is, um, got to give it a minute here just to boot back up. Once it connects, then you'll see it will come in unprofiled. And you can see here, we have a, a dot one X authentication going on. So it's using a username and that is coming from my parallels workstation here. So this is doing dot one X authentication. It also Mac authed. So it, the, um, the Mac mini that this is running on uh, plugged in and uh, that portion, so the Mac OS isn't set up to do 
the dot one x authentication um, so it ended up mac authing it because the switch never received uh, any epoll packets but you can see if i go in here on my parallels workstation and if i do um if i do services the way you turn on is you go uh, the dot one x um, authentication is you go to wire uh, wired LAN auto config by default that's going to be off if you turn that on then it will try to authenticate and get onto the network dot one x so let me close this down and my AP should be coming up soon so let me also do a show port access clients so here is my AP it is unprofiled in port 16 so here it came up right here unprofiled you can see um, you can see the timestamp matches it just came up and it should automatically profile it bounce the port and then move it into the proper role. So let me do, let's see how long it takes. Show port access clients. So it's still unprofiled here. Oh, there it goes. So it, it changed it. Here it was at the timestamp. So it took seven seconds to profile it. And um, you see here, you can see here it came up as unprofiled, and then here it came up as a, a, an Aruba access point. So let's do show port. Oh, still showing on. Um, so this must have been something else that it was profiled. Let me see. Oh, sorry, down here it failed. You can see the MAC ad addresses are different. So here it was unprofiled, and then it took uh, 43 seconds, and now it profiled it and pushed that down. And that was port 116. So here it is down here. So it is now properly profiled. You can see up here it was unprofiled. So there's just an example of how to zero touch provision your switch, but also um, using Aruba Central and ClearPass, how I am uh, adding extra security into the network and allowing the network to configure itself. So as the devices plug into the network, um, I am having them um, profiled and the proper role wrapped around them.